we're back for another week of GrackCast. We've got a new affiliate to welcome in this week, Joe. Oh, a new affiliate. Let's yep. hear about it. We got Monster FM in Cottage Valley. Where's Cottage Valley? I was hoping you were going to ask me where Cottage Valley is, Joe. Cottage Valley is in New York State, and it's right in the crook of New York. You know, kind of where that, that choke point is that becomes uh, the island handle of New York? Oh, down there. Okay, I get it. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, they. I, wait a minute. They have their own radio stations there? I figured they would just use the New York stations. Joe, this is an important place. Back right. during the American Revolution, Bailey Cottage was once known as Storm's Corner. It's an intense place we're talking to right now. Of course they got their own radio station. Well, we're glad to be on the air there. We are also from New York, the other side of the state, over western New York, east of Canada, Buffalo, Niagara Falls, North Tonawanda. You call it. That's where we're from. I'm, I'm guessing I'm guessing these Valley Cottage people are probably Jets fans or Giants fans. Probably Giants fans. Yeah. I think Jets fans are like uh, Long Islanders. I, I, I got nothing against Giants fans other than the fact I'm still bitter about the Super Bowl 25, but... I mean, that was more... That I blame Marv Levy more for that than the Giants. So. You Valley Cottage Jets yeah. fans. Ugh, we're not yeah. talking to you. But that was just a simple case of being out-coached, is all that was. Oh, yeah. So. That, that's pretty much my opinion of all those Super Bowls, is at the end of the day, when you got to the championship games, that's when coaching actually mattered, and yeah. you got your asses whooped. Yeah. So what'd you do this week, Joe? Well, the hammer finally came down. I got let go uh, from my job. For the Valley Cottage folks, Joe, what's been going on with your job? Well, the, the company's closing, and uh, Monday was my uh, my exit interview, my last hurrah. We went to um, you know we went to a bar after work. Uh, I couldn't I shouldn't even say after work. We just went to a bar, okay? Because so we didn't do any work that day. And stole each other over a few brews. Yeah, you know, you talk to some people uh, that you work with, and um, was there you, any end of the road folks in amongst you? Like, like there, there's no, they're not getting another job. Not at, not at, not this stage. Um, there was some probably that were let go already. Um, they had like layoffs sporadically throughout the years, and I'd say the last one like six months ago. Yeah, those people were gone. So we were we're at the bar. And so you were kind of the skeleton crew, just bringing it in for yeah. the landing. When I started at Technicolor, we had over, we had around 500 employees. There was less than 200 left at the end. So there's been a lot of downsizing going on over the couple last couple of years. So we're at the bar, you're talking to people, and I can't really say anything because I already have other jobs lined up. But there's these people like they just don't know what they're going to do. They're you should like, share some of these jobs with these people, Joe. No, 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 no. Um, I'm I, I'm good. They're not the type of folks you want to refer? No, it's not that. It's just they don't do what I do. So I don't know how many times. It must have been at least six times I had to give the I had to give the speech. The uh, oh, you've been in this business a long time. A lot of people like you. You'll find work. It's like it, the attaboy it, speech. Yeah, the attaboy speech or the at a girl speech in some cases. And it's like, did I really mean it? Eh, maybe to some people. I don't know about to everybody. Uh, but, you know, it's just a speech you got to give when it when it's that time. So, yeah, that's that was my Monday. And then the rest of the week. I've hold been, up, hold up. Before we move yeah. on from Monday here. Yeah. Well, I've always wanted to know this. What what does an exit interview What's it, what's involved in an exit interview, Joe? Uh, an exit interview is just, especially for a company that's going out of business. Like, it, what the hell do they care at this point? What you have to well, say? Well, it wasn't really an interview. It was uh, this is what you're getting. Here's some papers. Sign them. This is uh, for unemployment. This is the employment placement agency information. This is the so this was more of a loose ends meeting. Yeah, this was a tying up loose ends kind of thing. And they're like, "You have any questions?" I'm like, "Just show me where to sign." And that was my. Only question I have. I never understood the purpose of these exit interviews to, for, in the grand scheme of things for anybody using them. What do I care? You're walking out the door. What do I want to know what you have to say? You know, I was just thinking, I, I, I remember my ASG exit interview. That was something. 
I think that was uh, the probably the funniest exit interview I ever had. Were you the one leaving, or were they getting rid of you? When no, you- I was leaving. Uh, that's when I I quit there to go work to go to the Olympics. That was an interview because I was working there. Maybe but you quit there to go to the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. So I was working there for a couple of months just to kill time before the Olympics. I knew I was going to the Olympics, so I I started working there. Because I had originally started working there in the spring, and then I quit to go work for the Bisons. And then there was a couple months in between baseball season and the Winter Olympics. I needed some work, so I went back and worked there. And uh, what did you do? Uh, what, what event were you in in the Winter Olympics? I was show? at the. Uh, I was. I was just a at the medal ceremony. The, there was the medals. They have a venue for the medal ceremony, and I worked at that venue. I was a cameraman at that venue. Oh, so, all right, all right. I never knew that. Oh yeah, yeah. I thought that was I thought that was common knowledge in the no. Gratwick circle of friends. Yeah. Which which Olympics was so, this? The one in Salt Lake in two thousand two. Oh, so you didn't even leave the country? No, no, uh, it's no. Not that exciting no, anymore. it's not exciting. No, I've been to Salt Lake. It's, yeah, no, it's it's not. No, it, it was cool. All I have to say about Salt Lake before we move on, Joe, use your blinkers. Ah, uh, I, I don't know. I didn't really do much driving. I let other people drive. I'll tell you one thing about Salt Lake, though. It's um. You cannot go and buy beer after like ten o'clock at night anywhere. I'm surprised they sell beer. Like if you go to the gas station, they just they like no, forget it. Beer's all locked up, um, and so we went. We had to go to a bar. We had to figure out which bar we were going to go to every night and become members of this bar for the time that we for the month that I was in Salt Lake City, and that's where we went. We went to the bar called the Skybox, and from what I understand, I think it's still there. And it's a very popular bar, but it just opened up for the Olympics. Hold up a second. I'm gonna put yeah. a, I'm gonna put a pin in this tangent and bring yeah. us back around to the first tangent. Yeah. What what happened with the ASG exit interview? It was just a funny interview because they were asking me all these questions like, um, "Well, why are you leaving? Would you consider coming back?" Um, just stuff like that. What what my thoughts are on the supervisor and what we they could do to improve the work environment. And I was just like. I worked here for like two months. What do you what do you what do you want from me? I, I just I thought it was really funny as well. I, I wonder if there's people out there that attempt to get to hold exit interviews for their relationships. Like when they break up with somebody, you're like, Well, can I at least ask you a couple questions before you, you move on and go? Anything else happened this week, Joe? Well that and I just uh, worked every day at the second job now, so that's all I did this week. And I and I did nothing for the kids. Beat you to the question this time because you didn't ask it last week because we had a guest. It's I, gotten to the point where word spread and they already knew. It's got it, it's yeah. assumed that you're not going to do anything for the kids, but hopefully you're going to start doing something for the webathon soon, so we can we can talk about what's going to be happening with that because I've done a hell of a lot for the kids this week. That's what I've been waiting to hear about because my week's been rather boring. Yours has been rather eventful, so let's hear it. Well, for starters, we uh, we've got our meet the producers uh, vlog videos out that have come rolling out each one this week. Uh, did you get a chance to check out mine? I did not. I saw everybody else's but yours, and I because I saw yours just came out today. Mine mine has a, a heavy first timers influence on it, okay. which caught me a little by surprise. Does Mike Garrow make an appearance in this one? No, he doesn't. No, no oh. he doesn't. You, there's a, there's an outtake sequence where I get slapped a bunch of times on the beach that 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 it, yep, it's in my it's in my intro video. Oh, okay. I'll probably watch it during one of the breaks. Uh, I had a meeting with our director of photography for the for the charity event and the crowdfund video that we're getting ready to shoot in, okay. on May 11th. We're going to be shooting that. Uh, we met at a little restaurant called Eat. Can you say the uh, director of photography's name, or has it not been? Signed? Oh no, no, no! He's he's oh, our okay, he's cool. our guy, man. It's it's Milton Santiago. He's okay. uh, he he's a superstar in the making, and I am so glad that he's the one putting the pictures together for this bad boy. Okay, but we so you guys met at Eat. I know that place over on uh, Magnolia. But do you know about the song called Martian Boogie? No. You've never it? heard this song? I don't believe I have. Damn it. Nobody's heard of this song. I don't know how I've known it. It's 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 by a, a band called uh, Brown Street Band or something like that in the 70s. And it starts out with this guy talking about how he's hungry and he's going to his favorite place called Eat. And he looks to his right to ask for a guy to pass the ketchup. And there's a little green Martian sitting next to him. And 
He turns to the Martian and says, What you eating there, boy? Crayons? And the Martian responds by saying, Why, no, they're Martian cigarettes. And then it goes into this whole Martian boogie song and dance, but it's like a 70s classic rock song, and nobody's heard of it. No, I'm looking it up right now. Interesting, they're from Ann Arbor, Michigan, this band. Well, if you're if you're watching us on, on the YouTube channel, because the Gratcasts are all on YouTube now, I've got a link to this video there, mm-hmm. so you can check it out. And Oh, they did uh, Smoking in the Boys Room. That was their big hit. All right, see, all they, right. they've done a few songs, they had a, they but no, had a nobody's hurt this one. Apparently, yeah. it's a deep cut. Yeah. So anyway, every time I, I hear this, this place called Eat, I always think of that song and just love the, the little Martian guy's voice and... Why, no, they're Martian cigarettes. So we we met to have a little breakfast and go over all the shot list and the plan for shooting this crowdfund video on May 11th. The whole thing's going to be done inside a limousine, and it's going to be designed just like we're doing the movie, Joe, so we can demonstrate the, the production value that we're going to put on on screen. Yeah. Yeah, that's what you want. That's usually the case. You want to do something like that. Or you can make a whole short film and then just... Throw a party for releasing the trailer. You can oh. do that too. Oh, we're gonna we're gonna have some sweet steady cam <laughs> shots. This this thing's gonna have a real high production value. But at the end of it, there's gonna be a really special surprise on how we're gonna tie this thing into the, the live stream that I don't want to give away. I already know the surprise, and it's gonna be a good surprise. So yeah, don't give it away. It's oh, good... we're totally gonna be able to pull it off. Yeah, totally. Uh, I get it. But after that, we went and started checking out sound stages because we got to figure out where we're going to shoot this damn thing. Oh, it's going to be shot on a sound stage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We got to shoot the. We got. We got to rent a limousine for the day. We're pulling it right onto the green screen stage, and we're going to shoot the whole crowdfund video and pr- uh, promo inside the limousine. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've got like a heavy hitter studio uh, um, experienced CGI guy coming in to do the green screen work to make sure the outside world of the limousine, even though it's not going to be moving on the sound stage looks vibrant and real on the outside of, of the limo while it's going on. Oh, I see. Any uh, any any idea where you're going to shoot this at? We were, we were checking some sound stages down in Hollywood, but the the, the prices there are, are – we're looking at $1,500 for the day and okay. an extra 400 for air conditioning. That's, uh, that's about what I thought it was going to cost, yeah. It's about the going rate. Yeah, 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 that's that's kind of what we were finding out too. But uh, yeah. luckily, you know, in the times we've been out here, you you meet friends, you yeah. talk to people, you ask who you knows what. You, yeah, yeah, you network, you, you network. get referrals. Yeah, and along the way, I became part of this this networking group called the Table, and it's spread out across the country that now, and it's got tons of people in it that help each other out. You throw out an email whenever you're looking for something, and if somebody knows or can offer a point in the right direction, they respond. So I reached out uh, in regards to the soundstage, and it turns out less than two weeks ago, um, one of the other members of the group offered up free soundstage rentals for the month of May to any other fellow table members because they just opened up a, a soundstage called Awesome Town Studios up in Valencia. Jackpot. Jackpot indeed. Yeah. So Friday, uh, myself, one of the other producers, and uh, the director of photography, we're driving up to Valencia, and we're going to check out the sound stage and make sure it'll fit our needs. But we've already got it locked in for the date, and hopefully, hopefully it'll work out the way we need it to. Awesome. Everything is coming together. And you know what else is going on this week, Joe? Uh, I have no idea. We've started doing our weekly vo- vlogs. Okay, yeah. Beyond the, yeah. In, the introduction videos. Uh-huh. So I'm starting to take little snippets of my day, which yeah. like Friday when I go to the soundstage and that, I'll be taking the camera with me and kind of documenting it and it'll be in my weekly vlog. But I found a hidden perk in these vlogs, Joe. Okay. What would normally be a, an inconvenience in your day or something crappy that happens or a problem now suddenly becomes an interesting piece of drama that allows you to have something for your, your vlog or something to talk about. It becomes content, so to speak. So, it, like, today, I went for a bike ride to pick up our business cards and accidentally brought the wrong set of keys and ended up locked out of the house. How many sets of keys do you have? You only live in one apartment and you don't have a car. Yeah, but we had bike key, we had keys for the bike lock that had a house key on it, and the house key wasn't with the bike lock, so I didn't find that out until I came back with the bike lock keys. The the landlord is on vacation, the apartment manager w- couldn't be found, and the 
building maintenance people don't have keys to the apartment. So you had to wait for Andrea is what you're saying. Oh, no, buddy. I grew up in the 80s and 90s in the era of MacGyver. There's always a solution if you got enough little little side pieces of, of equipment, Joe. So what did you... Maybe you shouldn't say what you did because you don't want to encourage people breaking and entering. Well, I'm not going to say what I did because you know why, Joe? I, I talk about what I did in my in my vlog video that I oh, took. Oh, what a, what a good plug. So Look this this was great content and drama for my for my daily vlog part. So on Wednesday, when I post my, my week that was on there, you can find out how I end up getting into the house. What an interesting thing to think about. So there you go. Where can I find this blog? Mine and Andrea's are on the Gratwick Films YouTube page at uh, Gratwick Films on YouTube. And I'm, I'm assuming you post them on the uh, on the Gratwick Films Facebook page as well? or Yeah, yeah, they're okay. getting posted on there, and we're also uploading them on Facebook on the Just Drive movie page. Is if where somebody, the producer vlogs if somebody doesn't really go to YouTube a lot, would they be able to find them on Twitter? Yep, on Twitter. They're all getting shared there as well. And what would that address be? Our Twitter is Gratwick Films, at Gratwick Films, G-R-A-T-W-I-C-K Films. And the movie Twitter page is Just Drive the Mo- or Just Drive Movie. And my Twitter is Sweatpants Joe. And I got to tell you, my Twitter blowing up this week. I got like 100 new followers. Come on, really? Yeah. You had a spike? I got a little spike. Oh, nice. Got a spike in the followers. Got like like 100 this week. Did anybody say they were watching they, they're listening them. to the Not show? Not a single one. Oh. And I've been plugging it on Twitter, so it's good. I got potential people to actually listen now because I've been plugging it. And then other people have been like, "Oh, you have a podcast? That's cool. Listen to my podcast." So hopefully Listen, we'll folks, listen, we'll listen to each other's podcast. We're begging for somebody to just say on Twitter, I heard you too. It's over. You can you can relax now. We're we're we're, we're putting ourselves out there. We're, we're leaning on the edge and we're just asking you to catch us. Yeah. Send us a tweet. That's, a, that's all we want. Just just a tweet. Hey, listen to the Gradcast. If you mentioned us both in the same tweet. The internet might explode. It might. It, it could very well. You could break the internet. It would be like Kim Kardashian's butt all over again. We might have a huge influx of listeners next week, Joe. You know why? I have no idea why. Because one of the other things I'm working on this week is our first press release for the All In For Kids charity event. Oh, okay. We're, we're starting to, to put the words on the page, get the, get the, the phrasing down correctly, and uh, about... Next Tuesday or Wednesday, the press release will go out and formally announcing the event, the live stream, the June 20th date, and everything that's coming with it. Well, there we go. It's, 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 all, it's all falling into place. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty excited, and I'm, I'm ready for it to go public. Yeah, as am I, because I want to be able to talk about it more. Have something to point to. The, oh, the website's being built, too. It's, it's currently under construction, oh, and by May 1st. isn't the website? Well, the All In For Kids is going to have its own website for, oh. for the event and everything that's going on, for okay. the live stream. And uh, we've got we've got a great guy, Ron Corbear, building our website, and he'll have it a fully operational. I'm talking not the not the, the second Death Star that they blew up while it was still under connect, c- construction. I'm talking the fully operational Death okay. Star. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. May 1st. Ready for a commercial break, Joe? I am. I am. But I I was, uh, I I am. I was going to say something about Star Wars, but it's cool. It's not important. We don't got time for Star Wars, Joe. We'll be right back. Did you know that with a bachelor's degree, on average, you can make almost twice as much over a lifetime than a person with just a high school diploma? Yes. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, you can make almost twice as much. Going back to college is now easier than ever. There are select online colleges that provide laptops to their students. In fact, there are thousands of college programs on your laptop. You can go to college anywhere and everywhere right from a laptop. Call My College Laptop and you can find hundreds of programs from 
accredited colleges and universities nationwide. Start a new career in law enforcement, business, information technology, healthcare, and hundreds of others. Call My College Laptop to find an online college that will provide you with a laptop in no time at all. You could double your earning potential. Double your earning potential. Call now. 800-925-1852. That's 800-925-1852. 800-925-1852. This is the worst weather we've seen in quite some time, folks, and I don't see any end in sight. People have been calling in from across the state complaining their basements are flooding. They need the waterproofing solutions from basement systems. If you want a dry basement or crawl space that will weather any kind of storm, you need the patented solution from basement systems. With a lifetime warranty, it's customized for your basement. I'm predicting this storm front's heading your way. Call 800-238-2148 for a free estimate or visit basementradiooffer.com. Hi, I'm producer actress Andrea Ball. Here at Gratwick Films, we make socially responsible entertainment and then use that entertainment as a vehicle to give back to causes that positively impact communities. For our next film, Just Drive, we'll be going all in for kids with a celebrity charity poker tournament for Big Brothers Big Sisters. The entire event will be broadcast live on YouTube as an interactive event where you too can be part of the fun. To do so, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, Just Drive the Movie, and join us live from the red carpet at noon on June 20th. See you there. All right, Joe, we're back for segment two here. We are back, and I heard, I heard that somebody gave you some advice this week that you wanted to talk about. Yeah, before, I, before we talk about this, this, uh, this advice I stole from a conversation I was caught listening in on. Oh, you were listening in on the conversation. Yes, yes. Oh. We're, uh, a- after that's over, I want to tell you a little story about a guy named John Titter. Are you familiar with John Titter? Uh, I am not familiar with John Titter. Is he like Wally Pip? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing his name wrong, but if uh, if I'm pronouncing his ra- name wrong, he can come back in time and do something about oh, it. Okay, he's from the future. It, according according to John Tidor, he is from the future, Joe. Oh, wow, interesting. Yeah. And and we're going to talk about him in the future. Oh, okay. Right now, we're going to talk about this advice that I stole. Okay. I was I was riding in the car with uh, a fellow entertainment industry person this week. You can't name this person's name. Ah. I don't think it's it's necessary to the, the the bit there, and I don't want the the information to to connect back together. And I just want to keep the purity of of the story intact. I see. Okay. So, I'm we're riding along talking about our own project and thing, and somebody else calls in a partner on his, uh, of his that you know when one of them can't do a job, they refer the other one to the job, and and vice versa. So they kind of look out for each other in, with gigs, and this person had a opening for a gig that they were doing that they weren't going to be able to do. So they were calling to see if, if my friend would be able to fill in for those days and, and take the gig while he was considering the, the opportunity or the, the days, the person offering it up and looking to get covered. So, you know, I, I gotta be honest. I just want to tell you up front that the producer is kind of, you know, out there. They're, they're like bipolar, a little bit crazy. It's going to, a not, lot of producers are. It's nothing new to Hollywood. Yes, yeah. abso- absolutely. Yeah. But uh, he followed that up with some words that that were kind of profound to me. That like I would never want, and this is why I didn't want to mention any names. I would never want anyone to have this conversation about me as a producer at at some point in time. And that that was what I really took about this. And and that was like, don't get me wrong. The producer is a really good person, and when everything's going well, they're great, and they're easy to get along with in that. But once once there's stress and, and things start getting stress, or even worse, the perception of stress, that's when they get bad crazy, they, they get, get overcome by anxiety, and they just... They're, completely neurotic and, and crazy. That's understandable. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. And the, the whole, the, the perception of stress is the part that really stuck with me because a lot of times in this, this industry or when you're putting a project together, things can start moving so fast and, and coming together and things need to be done. And there, there's a million different things that have to be managed and, and 
and prodded along that sometimes you can't perceive more stress than is actually there. I, uh, I totally get it. Yeah. So who is John Titter? John Titter is a man that started showing up in forums and chat boards in November 2nd of 2000. And under the under the screen name tra- Time Traveler hyphen zero. Okay, so okay, I'll let you continue before I start asking questions. No, feel free to ask questions uh, anywhere guess, along here. I start and, and, speaking into the mic when I talk to you. Yes, but, yeah. you definitely do. All right, so he started. What chat boards was he posting in in two thousand? Uh, the internet was almost in its infancy by then, so it's like the Art Bell site was okay. where he first uh, first appeared. Can't in. say no. What it was that a lot is. of different conspiracy sites. Okay, I'm I'm just thinking it's some jabroni who and, had a GeoCities website and just you know how everyone made their GeoCities sites or and Angel what, Fire sites. That's what everyone else thought for a while as as well. But several of the things over the time apparently have come true. Uh, there's been some accuracies and some explanations. Apparently, he had pictures of his time machine. Um, the guy has uh, his family has an attorney retained because apparently he's supposed to come back in either 2015 or 2016. Uh, but he, he's come back from where? 2036, Joe. Okay. But in time machines made by General Electric. Okay. So GE invents the time machine. GE, huh? Well, I'm sure it's who knew? somebody at GE. So, Not GE, the corporation. No, no, no. It's, it's GE. Well, I mean, I'm General sure Electric. An, an employee under... Oh, well, yeah, General yeah, under, under their patent, of yeah, course. Yeah. But what, what I, I guess our listeners should take from this is that uh, you should buy General Electric stock, first and foremost. Okay. So it's spelled with two T's? Well, obviously nope. it's spelled with two T's, nope. but I mean double T's? It's it's J-O-H-N-T-I-T-O-R. Interesting. So you start typing it in, and it, I mean, Google automatically fills it in. Oh, That's yeah. That's how popular this guy Th- is. This guy's a, l- a legend on the conspiracy site. He's got because a John Titter... Dot com. He's got his own website. Oh, yeah. From from November of 2000 to March 21st of 2001, this guy was posting all over the, the boards. He was explaining in, in huge detail how the gravity pull on the, the time machine works, what, what was going on. And apparently in, in his timeline and the way he explained the way he explained time travel is that if you go back in time and you mess with the timeline or have any influence on it, it creates a new timeline moving forward, but the old timeline doesn't get impacted because it maintains its own its own in, independent timeline that's never interrupted. You understand what I'm saying? I want to talk to John Titter and ask him, do the Bills ever win the Super Bowl by 2036? He's supposedly going to be back in uh, in the next year or so. And these are that's part of the, the things that that gave this guy that people started going back on because some of the things he said were going to happen in in that time period happened. My guess would be no. No what? That the Bills do not win the Super Bowl anytime between now and 2036. <sighs> we're going to, we're going to talk about sports in the third section, but I'm <laughs> I'm I'm right there with you on that. So there's two things there's two things you need to keep in mind with this John guy, Joe. Okay. Over this nearly four-month period he was online, he answered nearly every single question that was asked of him, and he a- answered them with, with tremendous amounts of detail. If you go on AboveTopSecret.com, there's a thread that is that is collected all of his responses and answers online that I've kind of been pouring over and, and going through. It, it's it, it's unbelievable the detail and the explanation that's, that's put into his answers. It's not somebody trying to give vague, misleading answers or, or any kind of misconstrued answers that could be fluid or misinterpreted or, or, or construed any way somebody wanted to see them. Well, okay. I guess he predicted civil war in 2004 after the presidential election, and that didn't happen. Well, again, these things go with the, with the timelines where it kind of gives them a built-in security blanket that, that certain things aren't going to be the same because once he comes in, the timelines are different, and therefore it's not going to be the exact same as the timeline he left. Uh, there, there's all sorts of these, these time travel conundrums and all of this, this type of stuff. But in the timeline that he left, apparently uh, in 2015, Russia and the U.S. attack each other and 
over 3 billion people die and where he grows up where he grew up is in Flor- is in Florida after this war had taken place and there's like a third of the population left or something like that so it's basically the same story we've been hearing from hand down from generation to generation about a post apocalyptic future this one's just the internet version and luckily, General Electric survived to invent the time machine. Uh, uh, yes, thank goodness General Electric sur- You know, the, the more I'm starting to hear you talk about John Titter, the more I'm turned off by the whole thing. Well, he, 14 years later, the guy, the guy has become uh, a buzz topic amongst the conspiracy theorists again <laughs> because the, the attorney for the Titter family has... <laughs> committed to he's coming back and and people can of course set up interviews and things if you need to uh with the family for his return okay how do you set up with uh interviews with a family of uh okay so they're they're these are family members of a man who hasn't even been born yet no he he was born in 1998 okay so he he was the 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 version of him in our timeline was two years old when he first returned uh to this timeline yeah so now he's like what? 17? 17. 17? Okay. So what do we just why don't we just go beat up the 17-year-old version of Yeah, him? why that I guess that's a good question. Why hasn't anyone talked to the 17-year-old version of him? I mean, what would that one know? It's not like he would know anything to to begin with because we, it hasn't happened to him yet. Why don't we just go and like just lock him up and keep him away? And then he'll never go and go but, but here's where we start getting into the time travel conundrums, Joe. By knowing what's going to happen and trying to change what happens, that always ultimately brings what was going to happen into ha- happening anyway. It just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy when you try to circumvent the known future in the past. Did you see that movie where they, they, the kids invent the time machine? The, the irony of the person asking the question here, Joe, is we just last night <laughs> watched a documentary on time travel that actually explained this very feature okay. and how the separate timelines therefore allow for this paradox to happen in the sense that there can be two of you and it won't create a atom splitting implosion <laughs> of the universe. Well, that's I was never worried about that. I was worried about that Project Almanac. Remember when the kid drew the, the picture of the smiley face on the back of his own neck while he was sleeping? Like, that's that's kind of what I thought when she wrote that note. So yeah. who, who drew a smiley face on the Project Almanac? Did you ever see that movie? I have never seen Project okay, Almanac. Project Almanac came out this year. Um, and uh, they, 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 the, the kid finds a time machine that his dead father left. He was like inventing the time machine at the time he was killed and he left it in his basement. So the kid obviously finds it years later when he's a senior in high school. So all him and his friends, they get together, they figure out how to get the time machine to work and they go back in time. They go to like Lollapalooza and stuff with uh, backstage passes that they bought on eBay to go backstage at Lollapalooza. So that I thought was kind of cool. And then, um, but yeah, so this is one scene in the movie where the kid takes a Sharpie and draws a, he goes back the day before and draws a, a smiley face on the back of his neck while he's sleeping. And then as he's drawing it, you could see it forming on the back of his neck in the present. And that's what I was thinking of. This sounds like a hybrid between the butterfly effect and jumper. That's exactly what I, that's a very good way of putting it. Yeah. With, with a little bit of the, uh, the other movie that came out a couple, couple years ago with the four kids that have kind of like the superpowers. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a pretty good movie. I can't remember what the, what it, it starts with a C. Yeah. I, I don't remember what that movie was called either, but that was a pretty good movie. And the kid turns out to be bad. Yeah. Well, one of them's always got to turn out to be bad when the kids have superpowers, yeah. Joe. That's, that, it doesn't matter what movie we're talking about. That's the plot point. I think I'd be pretty bad if I had superpowers. I, I don't think I would use them for good at all. I, I think I would stop powers. you. But I, I, wouldn't, I, I, would I would use my superpowers to stop you. I wouldn't be as bad as what you're thinking where I'd be, bring death and destruction. I would just, like, you know, steal money from armored trucks. and. Stuff so you're like telling that. me if you had superpowers, you'd be a petty thief? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's Come on. Gotta, well, gotta keep a low profile. What's the point of having superpowers if you're not a super villain? 
Uh, because then you could get caught and then, you know. Super villains don't get caught. Yeah, then end up in Arkham only, Asylum. Th- only temporarily until the next episode. Yeah. Everybody knows that. Yeah, but how long is it between episodes? We never find that and, out. And if you're worried about getting caught, Joe, then you shouldn't be a supervillain. You should be a superhero. I don't want to be a hero. Everyone, eh, well, just, then you don't want superpowers. I because do. You see, uh, you can't handle the responsibilities. I, you either have to do very bad or you have to do very good stuff. Uh, there, there's responsibilities that come with superpowers, Joe. Would, you just can't be an average Joe with I, superpowers. That's what I want to be, an average person with superpowers. Yeah, that, that that's that's the utter absolute opposite of a superhero and superpowers. There's no average about you anymore. I think the only superpower I would want is to stop time. Permanently or just no, here and there? At, at my whim. Like hero in the in the show Heroes, like what he could do where he could stop time. That's what I would do. Would you walk around and talk to a, f- a fake camera when, once you stop time? Why would the camera be fake? Well, because in your real life, there's not a camera following you all around. But if you had the ability to stop time, no, would just, you look off to the side like there was a camera there? Just kind of. No, I'd probably just feel boobs. Say your thoughts out loud. Yeah. Here's a question. When you stop time, do you think the boobs go hard? Or do you think the, the, like the, the squishy factor would still be there? Or is everybody kind of frozen stiff? That's a good question. Um, my understanding of it is time doesn't exactly stop. You're moving just so fast that the, the regular person can't see you. So I have to imagine they still squish. But what if I'm standing still while time stops and just looking around? You're still moving faster than what people can see. But how? So how would the squish work? Would my hands super slow squish so that it doesn't feel like they're moving? So therefore, they would no, feel they, hard. They would squish, but like when when you turn time back on, she would just feel like something happened. That's all. I don't know. She wouldn't know what hit her. Is what I'm saying. I, I feel like I feel like flesh would be hard with stopped time. No, I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure the boobs would squish. Uh, we're, we're being informed by by the sexual harassment overseers that this is a good time for a break. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk about sports when we get back. Let me ask you a question. Are you getting enough? I bet you'd love more, right? Well, AdamandEve.com wants to give you more with 10 free gifts. First, you'll get a sexy surprise for her. Second, a specially selected toy for him. And third, a little something we know you'll both enjoy. Plus, you'll get six full-length adult movies on DVD. And number 10, free shipping on your entire order. So what do you have to do to get your 10 free gifts? It's not hard. Just go to adamandeve.com and select any one item. It could be an adventurous new toy, sexy piece of lingerie, or anything you desire. Just enter offer code GIFT21 at checkout and you'll get all 10 free gifts. Go check out adamandeve.com today. Select one item and get 10 free gifts, including free shipping, when you enter offer code GIFT21. That's G-I-F-T-21 at adamandeve.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino, and how to get the money you need when you need it, simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement, and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method, and to get your free report, go to 30security.com. That's the number 30security.com. 30security.com. Go to 30security.com. All 
All right, and we are back. And for those new listeners who don't know, Chris and I are from Buffalo, and we are huge Buffalo Bills fans. Go Bills! And we are we are pretty excited about the Bills' schedule. Now we already know we already knew ahead of time who they're going to play, just because the NFL schedule formula is a formula. Everyone knows by the end of the season who you're going to play next season. But now the schedule has been released. We know who who the Bills are playing what weeks they're playing them. We're going to just run down the schedule real quick. And, uh, yeah. Before, we're before we excited. get into the schedule here, Joe, I know I know. every year the Bills have been, a, a, like, one of the best teams at the league at manufacturing hope. But I feel like, even though the quarterback situation is in flux, I feel like it's authentic hope this year. Yeah. I feel like with a, a coach that knows what they're doing, such as Rex Ryan, they can win with a marginal quarterback not killing them. The Bills, okay, so they play New England twice because they're in the same division. Week one, they play Andrew Luck, and then they play Eli Manning again um, this year. Other than that, they're not outmatched at quarterback on this schedule. There's, the, I, I would take uh, Castle or Manuel and put them with any other quarterback that this team is playing against this season. It is not a very daunting schedule by any means. For All right, the Joe. Then as we go down this list, let's uh, let's start with the quarterback matchup of okay. the, each one of these games. Week one, Indianapolis Colts in Buffalo. So you're let's just assume for the, the sake of this argument, EJ Manuel will be the starting quarterback of the, of the Bills. I really think it's his job to lose. So let's just assume it's EJ Manuel. Obvious with, inferior quarterback matchup in this one. Obvious. But here's the thing. You've got the Colts in Buffalo. The Colts never play well the first week of the year. They always start off slow. and New receivers. New receivers, and they always suck against teams with a winning record. They can never seem to – they have no problem beating up the chumps in their division in the AFC South. But when it comes to playing the other playoff teams, forget it. They lay, they show up, they lay an egg. I think the Bills run game, if uh, if LaShawn McCoy is going to be what everyone's expecting LaShawn McCoy to be, I expect him to go off on games like this. Yeah. Uh, and uh, the 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 Colts have a terrible offensive line because my roommate is a Colts fan, so I've watched enough Colts football over the last few years to know that the Bills' defensive line is going to eat Andrew Luck for lunch. Yeah, I, opening day too, with crowd yeah. going freaking nuts. I, I I definitely think the emotions will be enough to carry that one to a win for the Bills. I think the Bills win big. Like I I, I think it's going to be a blowout week statement one. game week yeah. one. I think they're going to come out of the gates. It's going to be like 03 when they, they whooped on New England 31 nothing in the opener. That's what I think this game is going I'm to be. I'm going to start calling you Joptimistic. Yeah. That's, that's what, that's what I think is going to happen week one. Uh, Bills over the Colts. It's just going to be a blowout. All right. So we've got our win opening week. Yeah. Who, where are we going with that? Week two. New England Patriots come to town and play the Buffalo Bills. So Buffalo. they always got to be coming right around the corner on the schedule to oh, rain on a parade. Yep. Coming off extra rest because they open the season on the Thursday night. So I want to mud stomp these bastards. Uh, yeah. So obviously uh, quarterback advantage New England in this situation. Bills split them last year, but New England benched their starters in the second half of the second matchup. That game didn't count. Uh, the first game I'm trying to remember – that was the the Marone resume game, the last game of the yeah. season. I'm trying to remember the first game of the season, how that went. I don't think the Bills played very well that first game. I think, I think they were, that I think they played them close. Close in the well, first yeah. half, and then blown out in the second half. Yeah, sounds Probably about right. That could apply to any of the matchups over the last decade against the Patriots. Yeah, well, I think that game could go either way. Honestly, I think. I want to say it's going to be a win, but I'm never going to bet against New England. I, I so. think if this season is truly different, that game has to be a win, but I can see it being a close loss. Yeah, I, that's, that's where I see it. I see it as a close loss to New England. But if you really are serious about making a playoff run this year and yeah. and challenging for the division and not just hoping you can settle for a wild card that that, that has to be a win. You're yeah. not you're not outmatched at roster to roster anymore. I, I don't think the Bills are going to win the division this year. I'm not I don't have those I don't have those expectations. I think if but, the Patriots take a step backwards after losing their two top corners, I think it's there. I I think it's there. Well, 
They With this st- schedule, the way we're there, there's some soft teams here. I think it's there. They still have, they still have Tom Terrific. They still have Gronkowski. They still have Edelman. Um, so no, they they still have all the weapons on offense. The Bills have the defense though, so we'll see. We will see. I I'm still saying. Let's put us at one and one. Yeah. So this is the third game. I think it's a very tough first three games to start the season. This is the third game. Now, it might not sound that tough, but, it, okay, it's at Miami Dolphins. Bills lost to Miami in Miami last season on Thursday night football. They beat Miami. It's be hot. They beat Miami in Buffalo, but they lost to Miami. Good thing about the Miami game is it's a 4 o'clock game, so it'll be cooler by then a little bit, hopefully. 4.30 game. You know, the, they lost to Miami last year. They swept them the year before. Uh, they, I think they swept them the year before that. You know, I I gotta say they'll beat Miami. I I think they should beat Miami. They should they sh- they should be able to beat Miami. Here here's what I'm gonna say: If they beat New England, mm-hmm. they'll lose to Miami. But yeah. seeing how we gave them the loss at New England, yeah. I'm gonna say uh, w- against New England, uh, they they beat the, the they beat Miami. Ryan Tannehill, I think it's a little bit of an advantage at quarterback for the Dolphins. Not, You're not talking, to, not talking elite quarterback versus EJ not Manuel. enough to overcome the roster difference. Yeah, we go to week four. Here's the the last two and one Bills heading two, into week four. Two and one Bills against another elite quarterback, but he doesn't play for an elite team. The New York Giants. Is he really town. an elite quarterback? He's won two Super Bowls. All right, let me put it to you this way: Is he really an elite regular season quarterback? No, not by any means. No, the Bills play the Giants. The Giants have been. Struggling the last few years. Isn't, Tom Coughlin, I think, is on his way out. Did you ever notice that Eli is like the exact opposite of Peyton Manning? Yeah. The Eli dude's gets money a, in the playoffs. Yeah, gets it done in the playoffs. Can't really do it in the regular season. <laughs> well, I, we probably got a lot of Giants fans listening to this podcast. Coughlin's now. been clinging on yeah. for uh, like well, he's a been like, How do you fire a death coach? Death spiral. How, for, do you, how do you fire a coach that's won you two Super Bowls? But the Seriously. irony is each one of those Super Bowls came in a season when he was on a death spiral of being being yeah. fired then. Maybe, maybe they will uh, be on a death spiral this season. And one of the Bills, when the Bills beat them, that'll be part of that death spiral. <laughs> and then they'll rally late in the season. It's good that the Bills are playing them early in the season. Three I, and one. I think we both, yeah, we both feel three and one. Now, at Tennessee Titans. Uh-oh. I smell upset. I, I, uh, you sound like you want to say upset here. I don't want to say upset. Who's their quarterback going to be? It's going to be that rookie that, that's coming out at number two. No. It could no. be Phillip Rivers. But I I doubt it. I don't think Philip Rivers approves a trade to Tennessee. I've heard rumors that the that the guy that's on the roster they've been comparing to Tom Brady. The the at least in Bleacher Report I've been hearing that nonsense. Who's who's M- Mettenberger. Mettenberger? Yeah, yeah. I I don't know anything about the guy. I don't watch the Titans. The uh, front office of the Titans is telling people that he he's he's a, could be a Brady like steal in the fifth round or whatever the hell they got him. Okay, they love everything about him. Sure, sure they do. But they've been kicking the tires on Philip Rivers and Mariota. Yeah, yeah. so Mary, uh, whatever. You know what? I'm I'm saying the Bills are going to win that game. What did Tennessee go three and thirteen last year? They should Something mud like stomp Tennessee. Yeah, no, I think Tennessee might be better this year. But by better, maybe five and eleven. Look out! The Bills are four and one. Okay, so here's this is where it gets a little tough. Getting that momentum. So we're going to week five. The Cincinnati Bengals come to Buffalo. Now is this week five or week is, six? This is uh, oh yeah, week six. Week six. So the Bengals have had their way with the Bills the last couple of years. Now they haven't won big, but they've won close. But weren't those games won- always in Cincy? No, one of them was in Buffalo, but. Thad Lewis was starting quarterback for the Bills in that one when they lost in overtime to Cincinnati. Didn't so, Fitz shred him a couple years ago? Uh, I believe that was I, – I think Fitz might have had a big game against them, but remember in the game, the year the Bills went 3-0, and then they go to Cincinnati, and then all of a sudden they're 3-1. and yeah. So that's where it all started. And now I think I think this year is going to be a disaster for the, for the Bengals. I really think this is the – the year that everybody fully turns on Andy Dalton. Andy Maybe. Dalton. Because <laughs> there's been like mutiny in the waters for, for the last two seasons yeah. with the fans and, and the team on him. I think this is the year it, it all comes to, to a head. The Bills have lost close games to them the last couple of years. I think the Bills are finally over the hump. 
I think they're going to get a win here. So there you go. I think the Bills win. So we're at five and one. Five and one. Look out, home field advantage. Going to London. Five and one this on our way egg. to London to play the Jacksonville Jaguars. The, Bill, the Bills, I know, if they're five and one, this is an egg all day. Even the Super Bowl Bills would have laid an egg yeah. on, 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 one, on this trip. The fact that it's in London against the Jaguars, yeah. I think the Jag- I don't think they're gonna. I don't think they're gonna get blown out, but I think they're gonna lose a close game to Jackson. Oh yeah, I, I think they're gonna lose to the inferior team for all the, the horrible excuses that the Bills have found a way to lose this kind of game over forever. So then they have their bye week, so get some rest after, and then you're gonna let that. Jackson- oh, and the bye week, yes, of course yeah. they're they, they're gonna go into the they're gonna go into the bye week on a disappointment, so everybody has to sit and fester for two weeks. Bye week at five and two with that Jacksonville loss spewing, Ugh. but after the bye week, the dreaded rival Miami Dolphins come to Buffalo to play the Bills. That- I think the Bills are just gonna curb stomp them. Yeah, yeah, that's that's become the annual uh, squish the fish game again. Yeah, so the Bills will destroy the Dolphins. Go to six and two. Short week for the Bills because their next game get that turnaround Thursday night at the New York Jets. Rex Ryan goes back to New York to play the Jets on Thursday night football, and we're saying at six and two. Yeah, this is another one of those games that just it. I don't even know what to say about this game. It, it's a game they should go in there, and and with with Rex be, of all people being the head coach, they should go in there and want to destroy the, the Jets. But for some reason, I can just see the the Jets being cockroaches and hanging around in it. I agree with you. I actually have this one pegged as a loss, which takes us to yeah. I'll take that take that as a loss yeah, as well. So they're going to be six and three. And then they have a little rest. Then they go play on Monday night football at the New England Patriots. Even in the Super Bowl years, this would be the trip, the annual trip to Kansas City or Pittsburgh. This yeah. is this is a beaten. Yeah. I don't care how good the Bills are this se- this season. That's yeah. a beaten. Six and four. Especially I especially if they win in Buffalo. I agree. Six and four. But I say they're losing both games to New England. So they're gonna be six and four. No, we're six and three. We're six and three. No, we lost to New England, New England twice. Uh, so that's two. The Jets and the Jaguars. Oh that's yeah, four. Oh. six and four. Six and that went from six and one to or that from five, five and one, one to, to six, six and, and four. four. Oh, I've seen that show before. The season is imploding. <laughs> I've seen this. I've seen this story before. And they have a short week before they travel even better to Arrowhead to play the Chiefs. Oh my God, <laughs> I can see this being. <laughs> I don't. I don't think they come out of Arrowhead with a win. Honestly, I really don't. I don't. I don't see it happening. We're in a full blown tire fire. The, the tailspin is on. I think six and five is very realistic. Oh my god! I think it's very realistic. With the um, five and one start, I've the, seen this story so many times. So the fans are starting to panic now. At I'm six, already panicked just knowing and, that that. That lump of the schedule is coming. At six and five, we're starting to panic. So I have to hope for five and one just to know, just to survive this this, this stretch of the schedule that's just set up for the Bills to have the disappointment after disappointment. December is coming. When so winter has come. Winter has come, and what better way to have winter start than playing a warm weather dome team in your home stadium? When the Houston Texans come to town to play the Buffalo Bills, at six and five, the Bills play the Texans. This, this is the rally hope when it's pretty much at its darkest point game. And the Bills played them pretty tough last year. It was in Houston. I'm saying the Bills beat them this year. Oh, of course, because yeah. because everyone's going to be freaking out at this tailspin that's going on. And now that it's six and five, they're right on the cusp of of being out of the playoff race at this point. So now they have to get that win to get right back into the thick of it and get all the fans back on the on on the bandwagon again. Yeah. So that's what I think. The Bills will beat the Texans when they go a week later to Philadelphia. And Shady McCoy goes to play his old team, the Philadelphia Eagles. We might have a difference of opinion in this game. Let me hear what your thoughts are. I don't know what to expect from this game. 
If the Bills don't make the playoffs, I could see them winning this game. If the Bills do make the playoffs, I could see this being a, uh, one of the games that they, they lose along the way of a 12 and four season. I, I, I have, uh, I'm all over the place on the spectrum of this one. So they're at seven and five right now. I'm saying, I'm going to say a win. I'm going to say they're going to go in and win. And it's not that I think the Bills are that much better than they than we're giving them credit to be. I think Philadelphia is going to be a mess. Like I just think they're just overhauling the roster, and by then it's going to the bottom's going to have fallen out. They're going to be trying to play for pride. It's not going to happen. I I think I think I don't like any of the moves they've made this off season. Yeah, Demarco Murray. I think Demarco Murray was more of a product of what's going on in Dallas than he is being any like any good. So I think the Bills could get away with a win. I'll 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 take that and head down the stretch at 8 and 6. I think they're only 8 and 5. 8 and 5, even yeah. better. 8 and 5 when they go to Washington to play the Redskins. Who knows what what Washington's going to be next. It's kind of hard. Let's just say for sake argument's sake that the Redskins are the same Redskins that they've been the last couple years. The Bills should be able to beat them, right? I would think so. I I would think that the Bills should win this game. Yes. So, but I just road games against the NFC. I'm not overly confident in, and uh, uh, talent wise, this should be a win. Mm-hmm. So let's 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 give them the win. Nine and five. Nine and five. I don't know. I think that's the game they get let down. All right. You know what? Let's go with this then. All right. I think – I don't know which way it would go, but I definitely think they split the Eagles and Redskins okay. games. All right. Let's just say – we'll say uh, – that That's a split. Yeah, that's so a then split. So then it's, it's uh, nine and six. Nine and six. This is going to be the make it or break it game. Or no, they're, it's, it's eight and six. It's eight and six. They split, so it'll be eight and six. This will be the make it or break it game of the year. At home, Dallas Cowboys. I, am I the only one that every time I hear the Dallas Cowboys now, all I think about is that Monday night disaster? Oh, yeah, obviously. Let, let's let's just forget about the game they played four years ago in Dallas where I think Dallas won like 44-7. to seven. But, yeah, that Monday night disaster, I'll never forget that night either. I oh. watched that big wangs. Because <laughs> the, the Yankees were playing the Indians in the playoffs, and I wanted to watch that game and Monday night football at the same time. So I went to big wangs. Oh, what a nightmare. That like, was. if there was ever a moment, like, in the middle of a 15-year playoff drought where you're like, yeah, this is going to last another decade. Yeah. That was it. Yeah. I say they win this game. Well, I think Dallas and the Bills are about even. I, I'll give Romo the edge over EJ Manuel. I, I think they're about even as far as talent goes. I think the Bills get the edge because they're at home. It's December. Dallas is a warm weather dome team playing in Buffalo on the road. I'd go straight with the home team on this yeah, one. I'm going to say the Bills win this game at nine and six. They head to Week 17 at home against the Jets. I think they stomp the Jets in the, the rematch. Let's tear those freaking goalposts down. Yeah, ten and six. I think it's going to be the final record. Is that good enough to get in the playoffs? I don't know. I think so. I think it probably is. I think it's enough to challenge for the division if they win the right games. Yeah. But I think 10 and 6 is what they're going to end up at. And uh, So here's the real question, Joe. Yeah. Exactly how much security do you think it would take to stop those goalposts from getting ripped down in the event that this oh, does? I don't think they're getting with, ripped down. With two with two nah. final home games, do you know the odds that if they make the playoffs that they clinch the 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 playoff berth at home? I don't think Huge. I, don't, I don't think they're getting ripped down. There's no way they, they don't. They haven't been ripped down in over 20 years. The fans don't do it anymore. I don't think it's happening. Because get, the last real team to rip down goalposts was the Bills. Yeah. Guess who's been out of the playoffs for 15 years? The Bills. And now they're back after snapping that drought. Are you kidding me? It's going to, they, they better bring the National Guard and they better bring it from outside of Buffalo to stop those goalposts from coming down because I promise you, if it's local security, they're going to be hanging from the goalposts too. We ready for a break yet? A wrap up the segment? This is the end of the show, buddy. All right. Next week, I might have a guest for you guys this week, next week. We'll see. We will see. Joe, I'm ripping those goalposts down. I don't care if I'm doing it myself. It sounds like a plan. That was Chris. I'm Joe. Thanks for checking out the grad class. Welcome to the journey, Valley Cottage.
Did you know that with a bachelor's degree, on average, you can make almost twice as much? Hi, I'm producer actress Andrea Vall. Here at Gratwick Films, we make socially responsible entertainment and then use that entertainment as a vehicle to give back to causes that positively impact communities. For our next film, Just Drive, we'll be going all in for kids with the celebrity charity poker tournament for Big Brothers Big Sisters. The entire event will be broadcast live on YouTube as an interactive event where you too can be part of the fun. To do so, just subscribe to our YouTube channel, Just Drive the Movie, and join us live from the red carpet at noon on June 20th. See you there.